On the prosecution of National Treasury Cabinet Secretary Henry Ruth Hitch adds to a long list of finance ministers who have been rocked by financial scandals leading to their exit. Ruth Hitch is the third longest serving minister after former President Mwai Kibaki and Arthur Magugu. Sam Gituku looks back at a docket that has changed the course of careers for many, including birthing two presidents. Since independence, 15 men have been in charge of the country's fiscal planning and financial fortunes. Most of them made controversial exits. James Gishiro and Mwai Kibaki served in founding president Jomo Kenyatta's government. Kibaki remains the longest serving finance minister for a record of years. Kibaki was succeeded by Arthur Magogo, who served for seven years. Professor George Saitoti succeeded Magogo and was at the time the vice president. He handed over to Musala Mudavadi. Others were Simeon Nyachai, Francis Masahalia, Chris Okemo and Chris Obure. All served for between one and two years, concluding President Daniel Moy's list of eight finance ministers. Exit Moy and Tamoy Kibaki. His inaugural finance minister was David Miraria, followed by Amos Kemunya, both whose exit was acrimonious. The late John Mishuki was appointed in an acting capacity before paving way for the current president, whose stint was blurred by the infamous typing error of 9.2 billion shillings and earth by a parliamentary committee. It showed extra money in the supplementary budget of 2009. They may not be 100% uh, um, um, correct as a result, like I'm saying, of computer input. And after Kenyatta resigned from government following the mention in the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity Charges, Jeru Githai concluded Kibaki's presidential term. Henry Kiplagatrotich has driven the Jubilee government's fiscal agenda for six years, but not without controversy. Before the dam scandal, the 2014 eurobond was the biggest headache for the economist of unexplained expenditure from the eurobond proceeds, even though the Auditor General found no leads to economic crimes. The Aurora and Kimorel dam scandal are the latest to rock a Kenyan government. There have been more that shook governments to the core that would suggest a jinxed docket. During Professor George Saitoti's tenure, the Golden Bug scandal surfaced. The government had gotten into an arrangement to sell precious metals in return for foreign earnings. The country did not have such minerals. Justice Samuel Bosire put the scandal at 27 billion shillings lost in fraudulent deals. Even though Saitoti survived the scandal for 14 years after leaving the docket, he resigned after the Justice Bosire Commission recommended his further investigation. He was never charged and died in 2012. Musale Mudavadi took over from Saitoti, having to resolve the Golden Bug scandal. He still pleads innocence, and while no inquiry has pointed to his culpability, it remains prominent in his career. But I stood my ground, and I testified. In the issue of uh, uh, the, the, the anglo leasing I was in court. I testified. I gave my testimony as a witness. Chris Okemo has never gotten closure on his case alongside former Kenya Power Managing Director Samuel Gishuru in a case where they are accused of taking kickbacks in power contracts and laundering the proceeds to the Jersey Island. Okemo and Gishuru have been fighting extradition for several years, a matter still pending at the Supreme Court. Okemo was energy minister during the state crimes. While most casualties of the Anglo leasing scandal estimated at about 10 billion shillings belong to the Kibaki government, it began in the sunset years of the Moi presidency. Chris Obore still has a pending case. He was charged in 2015 alongside the late David Muraria, Kibaki's first finance minister. Muraria was forced to resign after intense pressure in February 2006, going into political oblivion to return to the limelight only because of his prosecution. He took plea from a hospital bed nine months since his co-accused pleaded not guilty. He died in April 2017 before conclusion of the case. To stop corruption at the Treasury, Kimunya must go. Kipipiri MP Amos Kimunya's handling of the sale of Grand Regency Hotel, now like a Regency, landed him in trouble. He had to step aside to clear his name. A lot of weight is given to the Cabinet Secretary in the Treasury, or for that matter, finance. And uh, this is where all issues relating to public financial management are vested. For Otij, the storm has been rough. He becomes the first minister from the docket to be charged while in office. His tenure now uncertain, given President Kenyatta's promise that anyone arraigned must leave office.
For 54 years, the occupants of the office behind me have known nothing but delicate dealings prone to competing financial and political interests. And while they may have planned for the country, they never really planned for their exit, which is mostly unceremonious. Sam Gitukusri TV, Nairobi.